In this video, I'll show you how to derive a child's initial consonant cluster inventory from a speech sample. And from that inventory, we will determine the child's minimum sonority distance. First, we need to, um, first we need to discuss the concept of sonority and why it's relevant to consonant clusters. Sonority is a phonological concept that is related to the acoustic intensity or the loudness of a particular speech segment. And what's interesting about sonority is that in English and other languages across the world, sonority plays a role in how we form syllables. The typical structure in terms of sonority of a syllable follows a particular pattern. You have low sonority at the beginning of the syllable that transitions upward to a high sonority peak at the nucleus of the syllable, that's the vowel, and then it can either fall downward again to a low sonority ending of the syllable, or it can stay level at the end of the syllable. So you have two options there. Having established the concept of sonority, we can refer to a sonority hierarchy for English, the language that we're looking at here, and classify the different segments in English based on their relative sonority. We have voiced and voiceless stops. These would be things like P or B that have low sonority. We have voiced and voiceless fricatives that have a little bit higher sonority. These would be things like F and Z. We have nasals like N and M. We have liquids here like L or R. Glides, those would be W or Y. And any of the English vowels are gonna be the highest sonority. Having established sonority and the ability to apply uh, relative values of sonority to different segments in English, we'll now return to the data set so we can identify a cluster inventory. In this data set, I've already highlighted the occurrence of initial consonant clusters just to make it a little bit easier. The process for identifying an initial cluster inventory is very similar to identifying a segmental phonetic inventory, except we're just looking at initial clusters. So we're looking for a two-time occurrence based on the child's productions to merit including a sound in the inventory. So I'm going to go down here and create a place to copy my consonant clusters that occur in the inventory. A useful way to organize initial clusters is based on their sonority distance because their relative sonority determines how complex they are. So a larger sonority distance between two consonant clusters means it's a more common type of cluster, a simpler type of cluster. A smaller sonority distance generally relates to a more complex cluster, a cluster that's less common, less frequently occurring in languages around the world. So we'll organize them in that way. We'll have the large sonority distance clusters here on the left. We'll also have a place for negative sonority distance clusters. These are special adjunct clusters that don't behave in the same way as true clusters. And we'll also have our three element S um, clusters like squa or spla, which are categorized differently because they have three elements. And now we can add cluster occurrences from the data set. We have BL here, which would be a two and a six. That makes a distance of four. And just like with a phonetic inventory, I'm going to write the cluster when I see it once, and then I'll circle it when I see it twice. We have boa. So that's going to be a voiced stop and a glide. That's a distance of five. Now we had several instances of bois, so I want to go ahead and circle that. We have cl, which is a voiceless stop one, and a liquid six. That's going to be a sonority distance of five. And there was more than one instance, so we'll circle it. We have dr. That's another sonority distance four cluster. We have dwa. We have FL, and that is going to be another five cluster, and there were two instances there. Scratch that. 
the first segment is a voiceless fricative, which makes it a sonority distance three cluster, not a sonority distance five cluster. FW, that's a voiceless three. And a glide seven, that's going to be a distance of four. And I believe there were, yep, multiple occurrences. So we're going to circle that one. We had one instance of GL, one instance of GW. One instance of PL. Two instances of PW. One instance of KW. Multiple instance, or no, I'm sorry, just one instance of SK. Now that's going to be a negative sonority distance, and I'll show you here. K is a voiceless stop, that's a level of 1, and S is a voiceless fricative, that's a level of 3. So if we were to draw what that looks like, it would be like this. Let's just do a vowel. We are starting a little bit higher at a level 3, and then we're going down to a level 1, and then up again. So that is a different sonority shape. It's not the typical single peak syllable shape that is generally expected for most syllables. So this is an exceptional type of structure. In English, we refer to these as adjunct clusters, and they fall into a different category than these other consonant clusters. So we'll keep them over here. Here we have some three element clusters, SKW, which occurred more than once. Now we have one ST cluster, be another negative two sonority distance adjunct cluster. SL, that's a voiceless fricative and a liquid sonority distance of three. SP, that's another negative two cluster. We have another instance of SP, so we're going to go ahead and circle that. Two instances of SPL, that's a three element cluster. We have an instance of STW. STW, or STWA, is not a three-element cluster that occurs in English, but it is in the child system. So we are still including it because this is an independent analysis. It's not about which clusters are correct. It's about which clusters exist in the child's inventory. So this is just as important to include as ambient clusters that are part of the target language. After adding the rest of the occurrences, this is going to be our complete initial consonant cluster inventory for this child. So what I would actually do here is remove all the ones that only occurred once. Because that's not enough instances, just remove my notes there. And this is going to be our complete inventory. Now our task is to identify what is this child's minimum sonority distance. For considering minimum sonority distance, we're generally considering two element clusters and only those that are true consonant clusters. So we're not going to be looking at these for this part. We're just going to look at these true two element consonant clusters and look for the smallest sonority distance that the child demonstrates. And that would be a distance of three because the child has FL, FLA, in their inventory, which demonstrates that they can produce consonant clusters with as small of a sonority distance as three.